Well, good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. And this is your Royal Daily News for November 24th, 2022. Their Majesties King Philippe and Queen Mathilde of the Belgians welcomed the President of the Swiss Confederation, Mr. Ignazio Cassis, and First Lady Paula Cassis, to the Palais Royal in Brussels this morning. The purpose of the President's two-day visit is to strengthen bilateral ties as well as European and multilateral matters. During his visit, President Cassis will hold meetings with the presidents of the two chambers of the Belgian Federal Parliament, as well as meet with the Prime Minister, Alexander de Croo. Upon his arrival at the Palais, President Cassis was warmly welcomed by their majesties and Belgian government representatives. After the national anthems were played and the inspection of the Guards of Honor took place, their majesties ushered their guests into the Palais for a photo op for the press. In the evening, their majesties, along with the President and the First Lady, visited the Musical Instruments Museum in Brussels. After a tour of the museum, their majesties and their guests attended a concert by musicians Rutger and Elias, held inside the concert hall. In Den Haag, Her Majesty Queen Maxima of the Netherlands attended the 15th anniversary celebrations of the Multicultural Network of Civil Servants, the MNCS. Established in 2007, the MNCS brings together employees with dual cultural backgrounds to share their knowledge, information, and contacts. According to a press release, the network wants to contribute to cultural diversity policy in the, quote, intake, promotion, and retention of employees. The MNCS has more than 700 members and organizes theme meetings, workshops, and working visits on topics such as diversity, sustainable inclusion, and visibility, end quote. During today's celebrations, a conference took place in which Her Majesty attended. While Her Majesty the Queen celebrated the 15th anniversary of the MNCS, His Majesty King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands, along with the Minister of Public Housing, visited the Utrecht neighborhood of Overvecht. During today's visit, his Majesty and the Minister spoke with residents about the impact of rising energy prices and the, quote, affordability of their energy bill, end quote. According to RVD, the neighborhood is slowly transitioning from its dependency on natural gas to electric heating using solar panels, quote, they visited a corporation that has developed a system to generate energy from the outside with the use of solar panels and heat pumps. There is also a project in the neighborhood whereby 355 homes switched to electric cooking, end quote. By the year 2050, the Dutch cabinet aims to make all homes in the Netherlands free from natural gas. Last evening, Her Majesty the Queen witnessed the signing of a music agreement for special education at the Broadcasting Music Center in Hilversum. Her Majesty the Queen is Honorary Chairwoman of the More Music in the Classroom Foundation. In Doha, His Majesty King Felipe VI of Spain, accompanied by the Spanish Ambassador to Qatar, Mr. Javier Maria Carpajosa, met with 30 representatives from various Spanish companies that work in Qatar to learn firsthand about the state of economic and trade relations between the two countries. During the meeting, the representatives thanked His Majesty for his presence in Qatar for what it means to support their commercial work in the country. In the afternoon at the Ritz-Carlton Hotel, His Majesty the King and his delegation held a meeting with the Emir of Qatar, Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Tahani. The discussions focused on, well, the usual, bilateral and economic commercial ties. Meanwhile, in Monte Carlo, his Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco, as High Patron, attended the Monaco Phil 2022 International Stamp Exhibition held at the Stamp and Coin Museum on the Fonvier Terraces. The three-day exhibition, organized by the Club de Monte Carlo and the Monegasque Office for Stamp Issue, displays more than 100 of the most iconic stamps and philatelic documents from the collections of the Sovereign Prince and the Royal Philatelic Collection as well as national postal museums and members of the Club de Monte Carlo. There are also two themed exhibitions, 
One showcases India, while the other is devoted to the postal history of the Grand Army of Napoleon I and includes a specialist collection belonging to the Sovereign Prince. The Espace Leo Ferrer will also host a commercial exhibition where postal administrations and internationally renowned stamp dealers will present to the public classic stamps from around the world and the latest developments in philately. In the morning, the Sovereign Prince welcomed the Ambassador of the Swiss Confederation to France and Monaco, His Excellency Roberto Balzaretti, to the Palais Princière. Thereafter, the Sovereign Prince and the Ambassador attended a symposium at the Scientific Center of Monaco. The symposium gathered researchers from Monaco and Switzerland who are currently working together to find ways to protect and preserve our oceans and poles, according to a press release. In Abu Dhabi, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, the President of the United Arab Emirates, held a meeting with His Majesty King Abdullah II of Jordan at Al Shati Palace. During their meeting, the Sheikh and His Majesty the King stressed the importance of expanding economic and development cooperation in service of shared interests and Arab causes. The meeting also covered a number of regional and international issues of mutual concern. In Ueno, their Imperial Majesties Emperor Norohito and Empress Masako of Japan, along with their daughter, Her Imperial Highness Princess Aiko of Japan, visited the Tokyo National Museum to view the 150th anniversary special exhibition entitled Tokyo National Museum, Its History and National Treasures. According to a press release, the Tokyo National Museum is the oldest and largest institution of its kind in Japan. Quote, in addition to displaying many important artworks, the exhibition will introduce the museum from multiple angles, such as presenting its efforts to conserve and exhibit tangible cultural heritage. With an engaging format and an exhibition space, the Tokyo National Museum, its history and national treasures, will be a stage for new discoveries for regular and first-time visitors alike." End quote. This is the first time since January that the Imperial family have visited or participated in an event together outside of the Imperial Palace. According to the Imperial Household Agency, Princess Aiko, who is studying Japanese history and culture at university, was, quote, excited to view the exhibition, end quote. If you're interested in learning more about this special exhibition, in the description box below, I will leave a direct link to the official website for the Tokyo National Museum. In London, His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom hosted a luncheon for members of the Order of Merit. Established on June 23, 1902 by King Edward VII, the Order of Merit is a special mark of honor, recognizing individuals of exceptional distinction in the arts, learning, sciences, and other areas such as public service. The Order of Merit is restricted to 24 members as well as additional foreign recipients. As with the Royal Victorian Order, the Order of Merit is a sole gift of the Sovereign, but carries no rank apart from the initials OM after the name. While His Majesty the King hosted a luncheon at Buckingham Palace, His Royal Highness the Duke of Cornwall visited the Duchy of Cornwall to meet with organizations who are supporting the local community and staff working for the Duchy of Cornwall. Per Buckingham Palace, the day began with a visit to the, quote, New Quay Orchard, a seven-acre urban green space located on Duchy land, which provides environmental education, employability training, and community events. Built by the community, for the community, the orchard has flourished over the last eight years and is now home to a great variety of initiatives that aims to combat social isolation, promote healthy lifestyles, and support those who are feeling the impacts of the cost of living crisis. The site also runs a community cafe and acts as a venue that offers a space for local people to run events, workshops, classes, and social clubs. The Duke joined volunteers at the Anne Lowarth Cornish for Garden, one of the original growing spaces at the orchard, and a space where volunteers can learn skills, make new friends, and improve their physical and mental health. The orchard currently works with over 120 active volunteers each week, 
who take stewardship of the orchard in everything from mulching and weeding to developing structures and planting trees. His Royal Highness then visited an educational area where people are trained in cooking, gardening, and other practical skills to help them move into employment, education, or further training. The day ended with the Duke paying a visit to the community cafe, Canteen at the Orchard, whose core ethos is sustainability and serves produce grown and picked by volunteers in the gardens. Whilst in Cornwall, His Royal Highness also visited the duchy offices to meet with staff as he takes forward the stewardship of the estate." End quote. In East London, Her Majesty the Queen Consort of the United Kingdom, accompanied by Paddington actor Mr. Hugh Bonneville, personally delivered dozens of Paddington bears to children at the Barnardo's nursery. The Paddington Bears were left in tribute by thousands of mourners in tribute to the late Queen Elizabeth II. During today's visit, Her Majesty the Queen Consort and Mr. Bonneville met with young children at the nursery and were even spotted enjoying a marmalade sandwich this afternoon. In Oslo, Her Highness Princess Mother Louise of Norway was recently named the Best Dressed Woman of the Year by the Norwegian fashion magazine KK. In the issue, the princess discusses how her fashion aesthetic has changed over the years, who inspires her fashion-wise, her fiancé Shaman Durek, and reviews some of her most iconic looks, beginning with the famous 1986 confirmation dress. When viewing photos of herself in that puffy white lace gown, which I hate to say it makes her look like a giant marshmallow with perm daddy's hair, the princess burst out into laughter, stating, quote, I thought I looked good with my hair there, so you can imagine what I looked like otherwise. I was very happy with my dress, and I thought it was the most wonderful thing I had ever seen in my entire life. My kids, on the other hand, laughed their heads off at that dress, end quote. When viewing what many royal watchers believe to be her most legendary outfit to date, the infamous 2004 chicken dress, or as some used to call it in the 2000s, the McDonald's manager dress designed by Tulip and Tatamo that she wore to the wedding of His Royal Highness Prince Felipe of Asturias to Miss Letizia Ortiz Rocosolano. The color scheme was in tribute to the Spanish flag, and when the princess heard about the dress being referred to as the chicken dress, the princess said, quote, Oh yes. Yes, 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 yes. But that's how I've been harassed for a number of times, isn't it? She leaves a question hanging in the air, then replies, I don't care about such feedback. I thought it was pretty myself. That's the most important thing. I laugh about it today, and I laughed about it then. If I had taken care of it, I wouldn't be here today. End quote. So whatever happened to the iconic chicken dress? Well, it was auctioned off by UNICEF which raised money for various projects in Nepal. Last evening in London, Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Olympia of Greece, along with Miss Ella Richards and Miss Alexei Mavrolion, attended the 2022 Miu Miu Holiday Townhouse Party held at Covadis. On Tuesday evening, Her Royal Highness Crown Princess Marie Chantal of Greece launched her new fragrance candle, Angel at her London flagship store, Marie Chantal Children. Attending the event were Her Royal Highness Princess Maria Olympia of Greece and His Royal Highness Prince Achilles Andreas of Greece and his girlfriend, Netta Porter heiress, Miss Isabella Massonet. The Angel Candle will be available for purchase in January at all Marie Chantal Children boutiques. And finally, in aristocrat and nobility news, last evening in London, Emma, the Marchioness of Bath, along with Lady Amelia and Lady Eliza Spencer, Lady Mary Charteris, and Mr. Alexander and Mrs. Flora Vesterberg, attended the unveiling of the 2022 Claridge's Christmas Tree. The diamond Christmas tree was designed by Miss Sandra Choi for Jimmy Choo. According to the website Fashion United, the Christmas tree, quote, took more than 350 hours to construct and has been crafted from 69 reflective mirrors and accented with 60 meters of sparkling light, which pulses and undulates and reflects off the multifaceted surface and 250 individual aluminum panels." End quote. And there you have it. 
Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I will be back tomorrow on Friday, November 25th with all the latest world news. Until then, I wish you all a wonderful evening and a great day tomorrow. And also, I'd like to say to my fellow Americans back home in the States, I wish you, your family, and your friends a wonderful and happy Thanksgiving. Okay, take care, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye.